Hey, thanks for checking out Next Level Carpentry. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these fun toolbox fridge magnets out of real golf balls. First, I need to show you how to make a hole in one. But I'm going to use a drill press, not a driver. So, join me as I putter around in the shop and show you how to make these. And I'll apologize right now for all the bad jokes, but as many of you know, it's about on par for this channel. Any golf ball will do for making one of these fridge slash toolbox magnets. And I'm going to show you how to make a hole in one. And I'm not even a duffer. I'm kind of partial to Callaway and Titleist golf balls. And to consistently make a hole in one, I make a simple but very accurate drilling fixture. I use this block of red birch pallet wood that I had laying around the shop. But you can use a regular 2x4. Or if you want to take it to the masters, Use a piece of tiger wood if you happen to have one on hand. This piece of birch is 28 inches long, about 3 inches wide, and about an inch and a quarter thick. The cross section is a little smaller than a regular 2x4, but plenty good for the fixture. Start by marking 6 inches from one end of the long block, and then add another mark on the block at 3 inches. Next, draw a center line on the wide face. Then, with a sharp punch, make a hole right in the crosshairs of those two lines for later. Now put a mark 8 inches from the end of the long block to locate the short block. And this distance may vary depending on the size of your drill press. With this initial layout done, I carefully cut on the 6 inch mark to separate the long and short blocks. I use Starbon CA glue to make this step faster, but you could just use clamps instead. Spritz the long board with accelerator near the location mark. Then add some dabs of thick CA glue to one end of the small block. Line up the end of the block with the mark and align the sides of both blocks as you press them together. Hold that pose for 10 seconds and it's stuck. And it's stuck good. This glue has a strong bond, but since this is a working fixture, I'll add a couple screws so I don't need a mulligan if this fixture gets dropped. First, I'll lay out for the screw locations on the glued end of the block. And then I use a snappy bit to drill a couple of countersunk holes and then drive screws in it to hold it forever and always. Once these steps are complete, I head to the drill press and chuck up a 1 and 11 16 inch Forstner bit and set it to the height of the long block. Next, I center the bit on the punched hole in the short block and clamp the fixture in place both to the drill column and to the drill press table and drill. Without changing the setup, switch to a 1 inch Forstner bit and reset the depth stop to go about 3 quarters of an inch deeper and drill a second hole. Using this sequence makes the two holes perfectly concentric with no fuss or extra measuring. Once you're done drilling, add a reference mark on one side of this hole in case your alignment is off. Then, using a sacrificial fence for better cut position and safety, cut through the center mark on the top block, stopping as soon as it's cut free. Well, congratulations. With that cut, you've just completed the front nine at like 500 par. If you like this video, I hope you'll subscribe to Next Level Carpentry and punch that thumbs up button while you're at it. There's links in the video description below to all the tools, supplies, and swag you see at use here in this video. In case your golf bag is a little light and you can't find what you need at your local pro shop. There's getting to be quite a few of these Next Level Carpentry t-shirts living out there in the wild. But don't let that scare you off because they can always make more. And that's enough of a shameless promotional plug. So I'm going to get back to it at the drill press. Back at the drill press, lower the one inch bit into the one inch hole we just drilled, lock the quill in the down position, and reclamp the fixture to both post and table for perfect alignment while drilling. Now that the fixture's all set up, it's tea time. Take your favorite golf ball and place it in the drilling fixture with the show face down. And then use logo marks and writing on the ball to get everything lined up so that the magnet looks right when this is done because the hole will be oriented just like it needs to be in the back side of the ball. I just make sure to align the writing on the side of the golf ball so that it's kind of parallel with the fixture and that the logo on the back side of the ball is facing straight up. Once you're satisfied with the position of the ball and the logo, bring the quill down and lock it in position to hold the ball in place while you line up the reference mark on the clamping part of the block, put it in position, and secure it with a squeeze clamp. Then release the quill clamp, fire up the drill press, yell for and lower the bit into the ball, being careful to stop when the hole is about an eighth inch deep like this. 
There's a golf shot. Once you drill the first ball, remember to adjust the depth stop to this setting if you plan on doing the back nine too. Now that you know how to make one hole in one, you can fill up your scorecard with eagles and not even break a sweat. And now that you know how to make a hole in one on demand, let's head up to the clubhouse, I mean over to the bench and finish these up. These one inch diameter by an eighth inch thick neodymium magnets are kind of a specialty item. So I've included a link along with the other stuff in the video description if you need to get some of these and you can't find them locally. I use CA glue to stick these on, but first I stick a magnet to a piece of solid steel and then rough up one face with 36 grit sandpaper for better CA glue bonding to the slick metal coating on the magnet. Make sure you heed the warning on the box. These magnets are not a toy and a moment's inattention will earn you a blood blister on your finger, guaranteed. Next, spritz the roughened face of the magnet with accelerator, dab a good dose of the medium viscosity CA glue into the hole in the back of the ball, and then press the ball onto the magnet, hold it in place for 10 seconds, and you're done. I got a little carried away with the CA glue on that one, but that's all it takes. That's a little more like it. No muss, no fuss. Two golf ball magnets, good to go. The cool thing about this is, once you're set up for making these, making a whole batch of them, it's just as easy as making one. And don't you wish shooting a hole in one was always that easy? I do. Now that I've run out of golf jargon and magnets, but not out of golf balls in time, I want to give a shout out to all the patrons listed here that go above and beyond to support the channel, which I really appreciate. It's been a long year with a lot of milestones for next level carpentry, none of which are possible without viewers like you who watch, share, and participate in the channel. This is the last video release from the channel before Christmas 2020. So I'll take this opportunity to wish all of you everywhere a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And as always, to everyone, everywhere, until next time, Thanks for watching. It was the night before Christmas and out in the shop. The dust had not settled, but machines were all stopped. Tools were all scattered around without care. The project was done, but they were still there. Matt had gone home and when parting he said, this place is a mess, but I'll go ahead without worry or care and just go to bed. Then as he slept, a visitor appeared who was sharp and alert, but did not wear a beard. With one look around, he knew in a flash it needed a cleaning and took off in a dash. Dust in the workshop, settling slow, gave the luster of old age instead of a glow. But what to his wondering eyes did he see but a broom and a dustpan? Imagine his glee. Now wood scrap, now drill bits, now CA glue and hammer. While naming the menagerie, he started to st st stammer. To the workbench, the toolbox, the trash can and bin. A place for everything until everything's in. He spoke not a word, but kept at his work, thinking to himself in a peculiar quirk, I should be better paid for doing this kind of work. But as the mess became less, he started to smile, and the thought crossed his mind, man, that took a while. Then he proclaimed as he turned off the lights, a Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.